In this video, we're going to look at activity seven of the paper, which is the interface testing. Test the interface of your relational database using suitable test data, normal, erroneous, and extreme as appropriate. You must not add validation to any of the tables. You must provide evidence of form level testing that proves. So when we're talking about form level testing, that means testing the forms that we've created in this part B of the paper. So one, the machine input form is ready for data entry when the form opens. Two, the purchase date must be present. Three, the purchase date must not be in the future. Four, the machine must be assigned a valid brand. Five, a record will save in the machine table if all the required data is present and valid. Six, these details appear on the meter reading analysis form after the machine ID has been selected and the week beginning date, meter reading and money collected have been input. The highest meter reading stored in the table for that machine which is the most recent meter reading. The number of drinks sold, the amount of money expected, the words call engineer if appropriate. You must complete the test log that's given in the exam and that's on activity seven template. Make sure when you finish this that you do save your test log as a PDF in your folder that's going to be submitted for the exam. I've opened up the Activity 7 template and you will notice that this is identical to the template that we were given for part A. There's a reminder at the top here about type of test, N for normal, R for erroneous and X for extreme. Make sure you screen print the evidence and it's included for all tests and that screen prints are readable and referenced to the test. Use the actual results column all right, to put your prints in, but if it's not wide enough, you can put your images at the end of the test log. But please make sure these are referenced clearly to the tests. Don't carry out any testing other than that specified in the activity. Extra tests don't attract any further marks. And then when you finish, you can delete any rows that are not used. The final column of the test log can be deleted, providing your tests work as expected. If they don't, then you need to make a comment in that final column and indicate how you've changed or how you might change your database to make things right. Test one. We're testing that the machine input form is ready for data entry when the form opens. We need to provide all the test data. In this case, though, it's all going to be blank because we're literally just demonstrating that the form opens up blank. So the expected result is the machine input form opens a new form ready for input. So we go to our database and we open up our machine input form and we take an image of it and drop it in. And you'll notice there, it's a blank form. Now for this, I would also be tempted to make sure you show that the form is set for data entry. So we've got data entry, yes, here. I would also show the part of the macro as well, which shows once a record saved, we've put in the command, go to record, next. And that means that the next form that will open will be for a new record. It's two, the purchase date must be present. So here in the test data column, we're providing all the data. We've got a machine ID equals auto null. Purchase date is going to be blank. We're going to select brand ID number one and operator ref nine. So in the database, in your form, have those details in your form and take an image. And make sure it clearly shows the error message displayed when the purchase date is left blank. 
next test is to demonstrate that the purchase date must not be in the future. So again, we've got all the test data there, machine IDs, auto number. We've got a purchase date here of 2023, so that's obviously in the future. Brand ID 1, operator F9. So key these details into your form in your database, take a screen image, and again, make sure the image is showing the error message regarding the date. It must not be before today. The next test shows that the machine must be assigned a valid, a valid brand. Here's the data, machine ID, auto num. We've got a valid purchase date this time. We're going to enter nine in the brand ID. There isn't a brand nine, so it should come up with an error. And the operator F is nine. Key the details in to your database, take an image and drop that into your test log. And again, make sure we've got nine in the brand ID and that the error message is shown. The next test demonstrates that a record will save in the machine table if all the required data is present and valid. So machine ID auto null, we've got a valid purchase date, we've got a valid brand ID of one, and we've got an operator ref of nine, and the record should display and a message will be displayed that the record's saved. So in your database in your form, key those details in, take an image and drop that into your test log. I also think it's a good idea here to show the database, the table prior to the saving. So that's got a machine ID ending in 3.5. And also showing the image of the table after the save, which shows a machine ID ending in 3.6. The next two tests are related to the meter reading analysis form. There's two because we need to demonstrate the words call engineer being displayed and um, an example where call engineer isn't displayed. We've got the data here, machine ID. I've chosen the first one. I'm just going to pop in a little image of the table for that first machine. And you can see from here that the highest reading is 1833. So we've got that machine ID. We're going to put in a week beginning. There's the date. We're going to put in a current reading of 1860 and that the money collected is £22. Now, what do we expect the computer to do with that information? It should find the highest meter reading of 1833. It should work out that the number of drinks sold is 27. And it should work out the money expected to be 32.40. Now, we've got a difference here between what's collected and what's expected of over £10. The difference is £10.40. Therefore, the call engineer should be displayed. Again, go to your database, key those details into your form and take an image. And you can see here, I've got all the matching details, the machine ID, the week beginning, the current reading, the amount collected, the previous reading, the number of drinks sold, and the expected money and call engineer is displayed. My final test then is on the same form, but this time I'm going to demonstrate that that call engineer is not displayed. So I'm using the same record, I've got the same date, I've got the same current reading, but this time I'm going to key in £32 for the money collected. And again, what do we expect the computer to do? It should find the highest meter reading of 1833. It should work out the number of drinks sold is 27 and that the money expected is 32.40. But this time the difference is only 40 pence. Therefore, the call engineer will not be displayed. So go to the database, key that into our form and take an image. Before we finish our test log, just need to go through and number the tests. So it's test number one through to seven. And we also need to identify the type of test, whether it's N, R or 
effects. In this form level testing, with no extreme data, because we're not testing any range values. So it's either N or R. So the first test is N because that's all normal data to start the form. The second test is going to be R, erroneous data, because we're doing some validation here, testing the purchase date. The third test is R, again, we're testing validation, therefore it's erroneous data. The fourth test is R, again, erroneous data, we're testing that brand to make sure it's valid. The fifth test is N, normal, because all the data we're entering here is normal data and we expect the record to be saved. Test number six, there's no validation on this meter reading form, therefore all the data is normal. We're just testing the calculations and the functions. And seven again is all normal, again no validation. We're testing the calculations and the functions within the form. That's the end of completing the test log. Make sure you save it as a PDF with a file name as indicated in the paper.